we're getting ready to make wine. We have got a freezer almost stuffed full of grapes from Peter over at Rasco. I think it's Peter and Dawn. Might need to check. Um, he's got a website uh, winging it. I'll put a link underneath. And what we're going to do today is we're going to press the grapes. We're going to first of all we're going to wash them. This is just water into which I'm going to put some uh, what you would you probably know as Camden tablets, but it's sodium bisulfate. There we go. So I'm going to put probably a couple of teaspoonfuls in here to bring this water up a little bit this is warm water because my hands are going in it i'll top it up with cold so it'll be nice lukewarm then we're going to drain once we've washed the grapes we're going to drain and let them defrost on here put a big towel up here i'm going to press them with exactly the same process that i use for the apples for the cider and then they're going into this clear fermenter, this is a Firmzilla all-rounder. I'm a big fan of the Firmzilla all-rounders, um, which I will um, sanitise with Starsan inside. Then we're going to put 30 grams of bentonite. This is kind of like a clay into about a litre of um, spring water. And that forms a slurry. You're going <coughs> to pop the funnel in there, <clears throat> add it very, very, very slowly and shake it quite a lot. So add a bit more, shake it, add a bit more, shake it. There you go. Uh, and it makes a slurry. And we then pour that into the all rounder. Um, and it, what it does, these are negatively charged particles and they will then bond to the positively charged particles and help it to clarify uh, and then I'm going to use a vegan finings at the end of it so I'm not going to use ketosol or anything like that which are made from crabs yeah really honest so first off top the water up here get the grapes going and then we'll get them ready for thawing hey, I've topped this up by the way this used to be what I keep sort of all the various drill bits and stuff in but now they're all safely put away over there Stephen sodium sulfate in here bentonite in here 30 grams of bentonite and it does I mean it it, it won't actually fully dissolve because um, there's volcanic bits in there and all sorts look at that just about get my hand around that as the actress said to the never mind um, <laughs> sorry not sorry right, I'm gonna leave that for about an hour and it just fluffs up all the uh, clay bits next gonna have a coffee then we're gonna get some of the uh, get some of the grapes out first bag on the scales 9.75 kilos so nine and three quarter kilos let's get them in there so, sanitizing the all-rounder oh star sand second bag 7.5 kilos and these are some of the ones which are just waiting to defrost this is the water what we did wash them in there's still some grapes in there, but we'll pull those out in a bit. Um, I know someone's going to ask, why am I bothering to wash them? Well, because you don't know what's on them. And they come from um, the yard, uh, sorry, the marina, as it were, next to a scrapyard. So there could be, could be some form of contaminants on them. So it doesn't hurt to wash them. Bag three. 8.7 I'm going to let this just defrost like this for a little bit and then we're going to wash and uh, let them sort of like defrost and drip dry still quite frosted up here look and then into press 
So I think this lot will be probably for the next, yeah, we'll, we'll press that then and then get these prepared. That'll probably be tomorrow or the next clip or whenever in YouTube land. Well, I think it's fair to say <sighs> there's a lot more work involved than we thought. So lots of washing, straining, um, picking off the stems. We've eventually got them all in here. Cool. Nine o'clock at night. So in a commercial vineyard, the first runnings they would probably discard uh, because that contains a lot of the stuff from the um, the skins etc but because we've washed them and also we've we've cleaned them a little bit with sodium metabolic sulfate sulfite uh, I'm gonna keep it I'm gonna keep the juices they'd also not push them all the way buff, 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 because where well, you've got a grape and then you've got seed in the middle the bit around the seed isn't quite as good but at this scale they do something called a tirage I think tirage something like that which I always confuse with triage but I think it's probably about the same uh, tirage is where they will uh, look at the pickers they will instruct the pickers to pick the best quality grapes but this is not California or a Dodoin this is yeah, Rotherham and so I think the quality of these considering they're grown in Yorkshire is outstanding <laughs> absolutely outstanding now I'm gonna start I'm gonna fold the um, bag straining bag over and put the top blocks in then I'm going to start getting the first lot of blocks in place. And at 10 past 9 at night, on a Saturday night, we're ready to start pressing. What do you got? Coming out for a litre. Coming out of it already on the first runnings. Okay, here we go. So we're down about three and a half inches. Oh, better swap that out quickly. What I'm going to do is take this back up and then put some more blocks underneath. Now I think because the grapes are quite small and not as fibrous as big apples, um, the, the pressing is going to go We're here at the moment. Anyone who's watched my cider making will realise we have to put quite a lot of pressure in there to squish through the apples, but this seems to be going quite well. Uh, let's get that down another few notches well this isn't going too badly we're down to here the block so there's a little way to go yet I'm about to put some more uh, two lots more wooden blocks under there I suspect we will be getting reasonably close to I don't know whether Ooh, blocks here so we've still got quite a bit of squishing to do I'm going to take it reasonably slowly let it release its juices and then squish it a bit more release its juices squish it a bit more and see where we get crumbs this is hard work so we're down to about here on the uh, press we're getting odd little drips coming through. What have we got out of that? So that's 26 kilos of grapes. And we've got, depending on how level that is, we've got about, uh, let's say 13. So that's a bit disappointing. That's a 50% yield where we're getting 70% from the apples when we're making the cider. But I shall decide now whether I just ferment that one off in a big fermentation vessel, though it is, 
um, at it's got some bentonite to go in there so that will bung it up to about 14 and a half um, or do we do the other three bags tomorrow anyway I'm gonna pop that in the fridge if you want more yield out of one of these all-rounders just tip it this way watch this yeah I'll just immediately put a couple more liters in there all right I know I know all right so we're gonna to decide tomorrow because it's now 10 o'clock on a Saturday night it's been a long day sorting cleaning defrosting and pressing those grapes so we'll uh, we'll make a decision tomorrow but for now I'm gonna have a beer so I've got a little bit of spare juice which has come out overnight and I think as it drips out these become more pressable I don't want to put that in with the main batch of pressed juice so I'm going to ferment that separately and I'm going to do that just using two litre water bottle funnel and anyone who's bought a firmzilla will also get one of these like pet bottle tops with a grommet and ale and an airlock which would normally go on top of the firmzilla but of course we get a firmzilla because we want to do pressure fermenting don't we we don't want to do normal fermenting but that will just screw onto there if we fill it now with some of that luscious juice over there we have a mini fermenter quite a lot of headspace in here but that shouldn't really matter as soon as it starts fermenting this would just be filled with co2 and we've got the airlock which will prevent any nasties getting in so i think we have the beginnings of an ultra micro fermentation system this is another wine uh, but that's from a kit that's from a wine expert kit that a few more turns of the screw i managed to squeeze that much more out of it wow so we'll leave that in there to see if it will spontaneously ferment if it doesn't it's okay i've got some uh, i've got some wine yeast i'll put a little bit of that in there but let's give it a give it a few days give it a week maybe and see if we spontaneously ferment this is interesting though 26 kilos Press down into about what's that? Two and a half inches, two inches, two and a bit inches of cake. Ought to weigh that really, shouldn't we? But that is what's left after pressing 26 kilos of grapes. Four point six is the answer. Well the tray weighs 0.6, so that's four kilos left there which is strange because that should give us 22 kilos of juice unless it's really really dense oh do 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 day two bag four 12.05 kilos bag five 10.65 kilos this is bag four after cleaning and washing and stuff. I leave them in here overnight to finally defrost and then they're going in the press. Final bag, bag number six. 6.3. Huh. So half of bag number four. Right. We have about, because we're not totally sure about that measure, 25 litres. Now after fermentation, clarification, filtering, and taking it off the trub at the bottom, there'll be probably enough for a keg and some bottles. Not a bad colour, not massively clear, but the bentonite by the way no fridge light coming on because 
this is now two days on nearly three days from the first pressing and what I uh, did was drop the temperature in here to one degree uh, to preserve the juice I've just done another 12 litres so we've topped what 11 ish litres so topped it up and the controller for this is currently warming it up so that little heater down there is warming this chamber up so when I've brought this up to uh, probably about 18 19 degrees I'm going to chuck the bentonite in stir it in and then decide what yeast I'm going to use cleaning down is interesting after pressing um, the basket or not the basket you know the it is a basket liner the filter bag if you like basket liner yeah pressing thing liner got a hole in the bottom and you'll always get a couple of bits come through not so much a problem with the apples but this is with the uh look at this stuff it's weird it's sort of like concentrated sugary so i'm going to give that a clean and then sanitize it ready for doing some more apples yeah but all this uh it's weird this stuff i don't know it's sort of like a foam really sugary all right so get it all cleaned one of the problems i have noticed with this is obviously you have to take the bag off um, by lifting it up and it gets caught in all these and i've also noticed i think there's a bit of a problem with the thread one of these threads has got well one of these threads you know this thread has got quite sharp in places i think that's where the pressure is such that you know you're trying to screw it down against the pressure of whatever it is you're pressing and it i don't think this is you know this isn't strong enough metal so it, it's yeah right get it all cleaned and shut up this is some of the first runnings which i didn't uh, put in there today and um, this is some of the last runnings which look how how clear that is and i think it's because it's now filtering through the compressed bed when you make beer and you do the sparge for uh which is rinsing basically the grain uh, the grain forms a natural filter and you'll again get quite clear runnings from that i suppose i ought to explain what this is as well uh we put the grapes we washed them and then we put them in there to defrost overnight and there was a layer of fluid in the bottom which was I suppose a part of the ice that had formed around them defrosting and some of their uh, juice excretion 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 something like that and this is it there's quite a lot in there <laughs> I don't know whether I'm brave enough to I might do you know I'm so tempted I think I might I'm gonna ferment that trouble is I gave my demijohns away so I might have to go and buy a couple of demijohns I'm definitely tempted to ferment that so that in a demijohn and that maybe mixed with wherever I put it over there in a demijohn this is the bentonite which has now been soaking for a couple of days and it does need a shake to uh, get it all mixed up again so that will be going into the firmzilla in there and i'll leave a little bit in the bottom for this lot i might put some in there as well I, you've got to do it really haven't i what's the worst that can happen i'll waste a quid's worth of yeast well and i'll have bought a demijohn obviously 
why did I give all those demijohns away? I know exactly why, because I thought I'd never use them again. That was a lucky one for Gareth. I've brought the temperature up to somewhere where we need it to be. The next question is, what yeast am I going to use? So I purchased Let's do the OCD thing so that we get them in numerical order. I know, sorry about that. Right. So we have the universal wine yeast. This will, um, it goes off like a rocket and um, you can ferment it down to 18 degrees. This is perfect for fruity wines and you can ferment that down to 8 degrees degrees and then this is for your sparklings your Prosecco types champagne types and rosé types not doing that I might carbonate this wine depending on how bad it tastes you can always hide a lot with carbonation <laughs> come on let's let's not go there let's let's be positive um, I've never made wine from crushing grapes before, by the way. Don't know if I've ever mentioned that. Now this would be, this would normally be my ideal choice. Um, but I'm gonna go with the all-rounder. And that's because as a first attempt, I'm just gonna, I, I don't wanna, I don't wanna push my luck too much. So I'm gonna ferment this. Um, sorry, this would ferment down to about 15, I think. But I'm gonna ferment it at 18. I'm going to read the data sheet again because I doubt they'll have anything on it. No, fantastic. That's really helpful. Muntons, by the way, you could try putting some details on the packet. That would be really good. Look, there's a lot of free space there. You don't need to waste it with no words. Uh, so I'm going to use this, but I'm going to use two sachets. This It says this is okay for 23 litres. At least it should. It doesn't, does it here? How bizarre. Right, should be all right for 23 litres, but I'm gonna use two packets and then I'm gonna save a tiny little bit for the Demijohn and for the uh, the bottle. Yes. So, sprinkle it on. You don't really need to stir it. That's the thing, just sprinkle it on, let it do its thing. Um, I know some of the Websites will say sprinkle it on, give it 15 minutes, then stir it. That's a sort of rehydration strategy, but I don't think that's necessary. Certainly everybody I have spoken to, which is a not inconsiderable amount of people, believe me. And not, um, not just on the internet either, because I wanted decent information. Which is why I didn't ask on Homebrew UK. <laughs> um, sorry. I might edit that comment out. No, I won't edit that comment out. So I'm going to go with the, the basic um, all-rounder. Let's get that sprinkle did it on and then put the lid on, seal it all up and call it a day. I'll confess I gave it a little bit of a stir because it was all clumping. Now I've put the top on. I've also got a hydrometer in there, electronic hydrometer, that's a float hydrometer, and I've got a floating ball with a dip tube. Um, so now, also, the top comes off into a um, just a tube, there's no spunding valve, there's no pressure fermenting, and it's just going down into a, a bottle of star sand. So let's have a little look with the torch. It ain't a bad colour. Um, I think we're just gonna have to suck it and see how it comes out. Um, yeah, the question is, I don't know if you remember from the, uh, we had that from the first pressing, had this cake. What do you do with it after you've pressed all those grapes? There's about 30 kilos of grapes squished into that is I uh, I dried it out dehydrated it to this and I don't know whether or not that will make reasonable bird food but we're gonna try it anyway 
I'm not sure I might break it up and then see if we can make bird food and I'll put that one in the dehydrator as well get that dehydrated and we'll have two lots of bird food if the birds don't like that I'll be chucking that straight into a compost heap I know people like these sort of things so on the tray before dehydrating this weighs 5.65 kilos and four days later boys and girls look at this so 2.15 so that's lost three and a half kilos of hydrations and it does feel a lot lighter it's interesting shift in colors yes it's a lot lighter so that's our next bird food I know people like that sort of rubbish let's put it next to the other one so this one I think was probably a fair bit thicker than that anyway we have now two bird food cakes and we'll get back to where we was before I so rudely interrupted everything but for now I mean it's a much longer and harder job than I anticipated I have to admit and, and I think because of that I have this kind of woo, not sure but anyway so today is the uh, the 9th of November we'll now just sit back and wait see if we get a nice fermentation that'll be it for this video now if you found this interesting please feel free to subscribe um, if you've enjoyed it, it'd be great if you click the little thumbs up. The more people click the thumbs up, uh, the more YouTube will say this might be worth watching to other unsuspecting people. So my first foray into winemaking with proper uh, grapes instead of using concentrate kits. Part two will be the next stage where we then lift this off, we rack this off here into another container and degas it in the vacuum chamber part three uh well part two will be and and then follow that through to kegging part three will be tasting <sighs> the trepidation of course not going to know for another couple of months yet because i'm gonna have to let it have to let it age a little bit right there we go our first wine thanks for watching cheers